Diane. I'm Bruce. And we're So Batique. And today is day two. We are really excited about <laughs> day two today. Um, yesterday, a quick little recap, we talked about our boutique rayon. We talked about boutique jersey knit and our fashion duo concept that we have with purchasing kits and fabric together with all of its notions as well as, oh, and some notions, the things that we love to work with when um, we make our recommendations for how to use our fabric. Um, and so that was yesterday. So definitely take a look at what we did yesterday. We're going to actually continue a little bit of the garment aspect of it, but today we're gonna focus on 100% cotton, woven cottons in particular, mm -hmm. and uh, what, what we've done with it. Uh, starting first and foremost with the item that put us into business, which is our wide width uh, woven cotton. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, our cottons are now at 115 inches after petite processing. And I know that's a great plenty, and I know you'll put it to good use. No more seaming, no more piecing. <laughs> uh, and it's a wonderful construction uh, that you can use not only for uh, backing your quilt, but right. quite frankly, you can use it on the front of your quilt, whole cloth applications. And as you'll see, we have uh, quite a few home furnishing applications yeah. for that fabric as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we also, of course, make a, a more traditional 45-inch woven mm -hmm. cotton, mm -hmm. high-count cotton, and uh, you'll see that as well as uh, especially our, uh, our uh, nuance, new homegrown nuance <laughs> hand-dyed batiks. Uh, you'll see what we've done with those yeah. and uh, some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to feature um, our Buy Annie product bags, which, um, or project bags, I should say. But I don't know if you're familiar with Buy Annie patterns. If you aren't, you're in for a sweet treat. And if you are, we're going to share with you what we've done to pull together our fabrics, her patterns, and notions into project kits and to help make it a little bit easier on you for pulling all of those notions together because mm -hmm. they are very notion intensive. So and we're also going to talk about quilted garments with none other than our cotton fabric. And um, I think that's our, our goal for today. And let's get started. By the way, it's snowing outside. Oh, great. Again. <laughs> anyway, we'll be right back. Hi again. At So Petite, we have a great focus on wide width cottons. We've produced a 115 inch wide, 210 thread count cotton that I think you'll find very enjoyable to work with. We have over 70 different combinations and can cut them to your desired length. When we're on the quilt show circuit, we, maybe some of you will find this a familiar sight, a three yard chunk of color and beauty that we call quilt backings. But here in North Dakota, we can cut to your desired length. If you don't see one of your lengths as a variant on our website, just send us an email, chat, or call us and we'll cut to whatever length you require. But the important thing to remember is 115 inch width, which you don't see every day, and the color assortment that we offer. We have from neutrals to brights, greens to turquoise into blues, many different blues. New pastels, Reds, berries, multis, color lake, which you find very, very popular. Going into darker majestic blues and navy. Light purple to dark purple, to purple mixed with a deep, deep blue. 
warm colors, browns, greens. Again, very warm, rich, saturated batiks. Besides putting these on the back of your quilts or your whole cloth uh, project, you can see from many of the other projects we're going to show you today that we've put these to alternative use. One of the things I'd like to transition to is what Diane has done with our ironing board covers here in the office. Okay, I'm going to let you in on a secret. I do all the ironing around here. And I got very tired looking at the same stained, drab, <laughs> off-white ironing board covers. Whether it's a big board, whether it was the A-frame, whether it was the little mini, I had enough of the drab, stained stuff. And I have a feeling you are too. So... Diane went into her laboratory and whipped up these really cool ironing board covers that we've kitted. And the kit includes the fabric, a wool batting, elastic uh, st stripping that you're going to use to keep it on your ironing board, and a pattern. Everything that you need. I know. I cut the kits. It's in there. So uh, we make them in various sizes so that no matter what you've got, we got it covered. One of the garments that I have really had so much fun this year making is quilted fabric jackets this is a vest but quilted jackets and of course the inspiration came from all those creative people and um uh i don't know i don't know if i could cut up a quilt but the beautiful projects that people have put together with quilts whether they be old or new uh turning them into garments and i just decided that i wasn't going to do that i just didn't have the heart to cut up a quilt um but what we did is I took two coordinating fabrics, our, our 115 inch wide cotton, and the batting I used, I tried a bamboo slash cotton, so 50-50 bamboo cotton in one, and I believe that was for this version of the Tamarack jacket. And then the other I used a wool. And I just wanted to see the difference in feel and whether or not it would be too stiff and um, how it would work with our batik cotton. And I did pre-wash the cotton to make sure that everything was of the same um, balance. And I really loved working with it. And I, I really love these jackets. And I think it's something that can be so much fun um, if you're into quilting your fabric to turn it into a garment instead of cutting up a quilt. So these projects that I did sew up are tamarack jacket this is the tamarack jacket pattern and it's by grainline studios and i think this is the jacket that people have seen most often on instagram or on facebook and it comes in two size size ranges now so it's the 0 to 18 as well as the 14 to 30 and that has been a wonderful addition so this is the first quilted jacket that I made and it has welt pockets and a simple binding with button closure. And I will say it does take a lot of binding, but that is the easy part. Um, but I really enjoyed quilting it up on our long arm and the inside, I wanted to show you, the inside looks just as beautiful as the outside and that's the inside of the pocket. And I paired this with our rayon. It's a simple um, top, and that one is by Quick Sew. And I think everybody must have this pattern, but it's 3161. It's a very popular pattern. 
and it's very simple to put together and it's a wonderful way to use rayon and coordinate it with other jacket options for you. So it's a simple, simple top. I love how this turned out. I want to jump over to the end jacket here because this is also a tamarack jacket. And what I did with this one is, again, it's two coordinating fabrics. The inside I just used our hand-dyed Baltic is the color. And um, the outside is the Phoenix Clifton Garden is the name of this one. And this is one of them that will be back in stock again. We ran out of this very quickly. But I did a contrasting pocket on this version and a hood and it's really super cute they at green line again it's the same tamarack jacket but at green line what they did is they came out with a um, variations pack that you can buy only from them it's a pdf download and it gives you options for a hood or a collar a simple collar and different patch pocket options as well. So, but that is an add-on on top of the Tamarack jacket. And what we have on our website is we put together, if you, if you would like to try your hand at a quilted jacket and don't want to cut up a quilt, we put together um, fabric packs. It's two fabrics that coordinate and you can order the yardage for the jacket and you have the option of buying a pattern. A lot of you have this pattern um, because it is so popular. So we always want to give you an option to buy the pattern separate from the fabric. And we include the interfacing that's needed for the pockets or anywhere else. And um, you can select from the various options that we have for fabric, or you can put together your own two options. And so you're always buying two pieces of fabric that are either a yard, yard and a half or two yards at the full 115 inch wide. So try your hand at this. I think it's really gonna be fun for you to do and to sew up a quilt, uh, quilted jacket, I should say. The third jacket that I want to share with you is a vest. It is the Buttrick 5473. And it's, I picked it because it's really simple. It has a top bodice and a bottom skirt portion to it. I call it a skirt because it's the lower portion. And this pattern also comes in two various size ranges. So it's from an extra small all the way up to a 6X. And the, the vest itself, I'll show you a little bit about it. And I paired it with our Jersey Knit. Um, this is the Lark T, also from Green Line Studios. So I always try to match something with each one of our projects. So on the back of this, again, it's very plain. It does have two darts right at the shoulder to give you a little bit of um, shape, additional shape if needed. And otherwise, it's just a simple, I just top stitched along the bodice. It does have pockets, so we have our coordinating pockets. You have to have pockets in a jacket. And then each one of the sides has the open slit. And it's just a simple, simple project. Yardages on each one of these. I will tell you, when you're quilting fabric for a garment, it does take a little bit more than if you're only making, of course, a single fabric jacket. So this particular version with the long sleeves and the pocket and, of course, the binding that's needed because this needs to be bias. It takes two and a half yards if it were 45 inch wide. And it takes two fabrics, one yard if it's 115 inches wide. Um, this version with the hoodie, you needed more. So that takes a yard and a half of two fabrics in order to have your long sleeves, the bias binding, and the hood. The vest took one yard of 115 inch wide fabric, two coordinating fabrics in order to make this vest because there's no sleeves. So 
Think about that when you're creating your next quilted jacket, okay? And I wanna show you a couple of other small projects I had left over because I was just learning and uh, teaching myself how to quilt fabric on the long arm. So I had extra fabric left over. And what I did is I sewed up a couple of um, stow bags. These are really great to have. And um, I have two sizes here. You have multiple sizes in this particular pattern, but it's just a great bag that you can use for carrying your fabric projects or your knitting projects. And this is the really, really small stow bag. And this fabric came from this project. And what I did is I just reversed it. So if you wanted to carry, so inside is the outside of this garment. If you wanted to carry this along with wearing your quilted jacket, you have a really nice, nice look there. And this version is the very large stow bag. I could put a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> and I did a mix and match. So from this particular garment, I had enough fabric left over plus enough to do the binding. Um, so I just changed each fabric around to give it a little bit of character. And then the inside has a lot of pockets. So you can put stuff in those. But it's meant to hang and to carry like that, just very easily. It's really a cute bag. So I hope you give yourself a, a try at a quilted garment. And again, whether it be cutting up one of your quilts or sewing up, couple of layers of fabric and cutting out a garment. So over the many, many years that we've been traveling the quilt show circuit, we were fortunate enough to make a few very special acquaintances. Yeah. And lots of friends. So one of those friends is Annie Unwin. Uh, she, like us, traveled the circuit for and travels the circuit for many, many years. Uh, and uh, Annie created a business uh, called By Annie. By Annie and, Patterns. And she has a broad range of patterns, notions, and good spirit for people who enjoy making bags of for different applications. Mm -hmm. And over the years, Annie kept saying to us, send us some of your cottons. We can do something. We can work together. We can collaborate. Right. Like we shouldn't have thought of that ourselves. Like we shouldn't have thought of that <laughs> ourselves. And one day, not so long ago, we did. Right. And what we saw mm -hmm. in return just simply bowled us over. Yeah. And our 115 inch wide cottons were put to great, great use. Yeah. Uh, Annie is truly a, a wizard, a genius. And uh, Diane is going to share with you some of the many, many pro products and projects uh, mm -hmm. that you can make with our fabrics and by Annie products. Right. Well, one thing too I wanted to share was um, definitely follow um, by Annie. Go to her website and follow her on her Facebook page as well because I believe it's every Tuesday or Wednesday she does a live with Annie and talks about a new topic, talks about tools, talks about how to use her patterns and techniques, whatever it happens to be. But we had the pleasure of sharing our batik story with her on how batiks are made and how they can be used for projects the Biani pattern projects and, and different things. And it was truly a joy. And so you can find even that video to, to hear a little bit about how batiks are made, because that would be a whole nother conversation. Um, and how we incorporated that with the Biani products as well. So follow her. I think she's got a YouTube channel as well. But I'm going to take you through a few of the bags that we selected with Annie. And some of them are Annie's samples and some of them are ours. And we'll take you through kind of what we decided to do with ours in creating kits and how we match colors and do different things. So that's what we're gonna talk about next, which is really a lot of fun. So before I get started, let me 
share with you back behind here um, various projects that we have on our table. And I think I'm gonna turn this just slightly so that you can see some of them over here as well. Um, I'm gonna go through them really, really quickly so that you can see them. But um, I think several of these are, tool, the tool bags I think are my ultimate joy. And these are gonna be the first things that I make myself. The catch-all caddy, which is a larger version, and this is just a beautiful bag, but it's a larger version of in control. And look at this. These are precious and everybody should have these bags by their sewing stations. And that is my goal is this one's probably more for uh, going to a class or having something that um, you need to put a lot more product in, whether it be your tools or your projects or paper piecing, whatever it happens to be. But these are great projects. And this one, definitely. And inside, the detail of her bags is just amazing. The inside has pockets that come out, whatever style it happens to be. Some use mesh, some don't. There's zippers here. Um, and the beautiful hardware that she offers as well. We have all of those components and each one of them available to make each one of these bags that we have in our collection. And I'm gonna show you one that is called the Ultimate Travel Bag. And it's this one right here. Can you imagine going on a trip with this? How beautiful is this bag? And this, again, these are combinations of our 115 inch wide fabric. So it is, this one here is the Vine Autumn Fire, Phoenix Merlot is this shade right here. And then inside, she used a, a beautiful blue, which is the blue nautical blue, and matched and coordinated the mesh and the zippers with each one of these colorways. And it's just an, a beautiful bag, amazing. And let me talk to you a little bit about how we create project kits. Here's the ultimate travel bag again. And I'd like to share with you what we include in each one of our project kits that we put together for the bags that we have on our website. And um, this is a package that I decided I would just put together so you could kind of see. And they always come with a pattern. Actually, I shouldn't say that. They don't always come with a pattern. It's an optional feature simply because a lot of you may have some of her patterns, but you don't have all of the fabric and notions to put with it. So on the back of each one of Annie's projects are a, should I say RA? <laughs> Is a supply list of everything that's needed. And I will have to say, the first time that I bought one of her patterns, um, with high hopes of running home and just making one of these, I had to really look at each one of the components. It has soft and stable, it has interfacing, it has fold over elastic, it has all these different things. Now, my big question was how do I coordinate all of this? So we hope that we've taken the guesswork out of each one of these projects to make it so much easier for you to start and finish and enjoy each one of these projects. So what we did is we have our own little checklist. So each one of our project kits will include the pattern, again, optional, the fabric of your choice. This happens to be the fabric that's used for this ultimate travel bag. And this one takes a yard and a half of three fabrics. So we help you coordinate as well. And then we also need zippers. So there's a lot of zippers in this particular project. So it takes two 30 inch zippers and we coordinate the fabrics to the accessories. It also takes a package of mesh. It also takes um, fold over elastic. And the other optional 
piece that we have to each kit is Annie's Soft and Stable. And I highly recommend using this as your stabilizer and not batting or some other uh, product that you might have that's a stiffener because it's just, it's so perfect to work with. I mean, when you look at these bags, they are sturdy and I guess that's why she calls it soft and stable, sturdy and soft, um, but it is the perfect um, stabilizer to have in your bag. So this is optional though, in case you have this at home or in case you do have another option for a stabilizer. And then the other optional um, component to each one of our project kits is the hardware. And what we do is we have in stock each one of her finishes. So this one happens to be antique brass, which is what she used on this bag. So we have a triangle, that's an inch and a half. We have the swivel hooks, and then there's also a slider that is on the strap portion of the bag. And so our kits include all of the hardware that goes with each bag, and you simply select the finish. And the finishes are the antique brass, they're black metal, or silver. And um, they each give kind of that different feel that you would like to have for your project kit, okay? So we try to package each one of these components for you for every single one of the projects that we have on our website. And we're hoping to add more and refine each one of the projects. Um, let me tell you, Annie has, I don't know how many bag and accessory patterns she has available on her website. We could never have them all, but wouldn't that be great? Um, and so we're picking and choosing different styles to make available for you and making it easy for you to start your project by putting the whole entire kit together for you. One of the things I want to show you that I'm now that I'm up here, is if you're not familiar with the Soft and Stable, um, if you want to bring this in a little bit closer, this is the Soft and Stable. It is a very thin foam. It's about an eighth of an inch, I think, thick. And um, it takes stitching with a 14, I typically use a 14 size needle and a top stitching needle because you're going through several layers of fabric when you're actually putting together one of the bags. So definitely have, where traditionally I use an 80-12 needle, this you definitely need a 14 um, or larger for the strength to go through the various layers, okay? But that's what the soft and stable looks like. And it's just a foam, and this is left over from cutting out tiny little bags. <laughs> So, with some of our fabric in it. So, you can at least see what that is. Okay. So, let's go over to our accessory wall. I want to share with you how we set up our um, notions. And you'll see all of these on our website as well. But um, we, we try to have a variety of zipper lengths. For example, 24, 30 inch, 40 inch, or by the yard. And if we're doing some custom kits, we will definitely take our by the yards, cut them down so that you're only purchasing what you need to, to, to make your bag. So if you only need, let's say a project like this one, which is an easy does it bag, this only takes about 15 inches of a zipper. So we'll make sure that we cut that from a, by the yard. You have the, the right number of tabs and you're only spending what you need to spend to have your kit. Each one of our zippers also have a matching mesh and a fold over elastic. And so we try to make sure that we get everything that will go into any one of the projects. And here are a list of our patterns that we have. I'm not gonna go through each one of those here, but then we also have the hardware for every one of the finishes. So that's the antique 
brass. Here's the silver. And then we have the black metal. And all of those are both in the one and a half inch and the, the one inch. And that matches, I know this is a lot of information, but that matches the strapping. And so each one of your handles and um, whatever you use to, whether it be the handle here or the strap, will either have a one and a half or a one inch strapping to it. Okay. So I don't know. I could go into so many details, but the one other thing that I really want to share with you, and I, at first I kind of thought it was sort of funny, but Annie has made a custom stiletto and pressing tool. And I normally don't want to sound like an infomercial, but this is absolutely a must have if you're working with, and it doesn't even have to be a bag. It can be um, putting binding on a quilt or, um, doing anything in a round or putting on interfacing or elastic or whatever it happens to be, the point on this particular stiletto is perfect for holding anything underneath your sewing machine. And then the back of it is a um, pressing tool that helps you without having to run to your iron. It's really cool. I really love these. They're a definite must have. So, that's a little bit about our by Annie section of our website and handbags and how we got into doing more handbags with our our cottons. And the oh, the one other thing that I want to share with you that is a download on our website, which is a, a free download, to make it a little bit easier for you, is we created this little chart and I call it the match. <laughs> and it's a four-page PDF and it matches our fabric, our cotton, to the colors that are available in Annie's zippers and notions. And it's just a great way to make it easy for you to select. Now, these are some of our choices. Um, you may have other options as well. And then we have a little inventory of what colors we have and what sizes and what items to make everything easy for you to select. I'd like to share some additional information about the By Annie projects that we have available at this time. So I'm going to take you through a little bit about each one that we haven't talked about already. The first one is a great starter project and it's the undercover and it's your sewing machine cover. And this one actually comes in three different sizes, a small, medium, and large size, but it gives you the ability to um, kind of learn how to work with soft and stable, how to do the binding around the edges, how to add a zipper. And look at this, it's got the top. I'm gonna set this down. It has the top that opens up so that you can lift up your sewing machine and carry your sewing machine. So I did put this, just so you could see the size. This is a small, and this is sitting on top of my very beaten up <laughs> Janome gem. So this is a small case, and I don't necessarily think you need to have your case and this case, but um, you know, I just have it in the office. And so what I did, is I just slid it on top of that. And so this is the small size to give you perspective. So if you have a larger machine, the largest goes up to a size 14 high, by 20 and a half wide, which is pretty wide, by eight inches deep. And so this is really great because the front zippers, you can put your manual in here or any other tools that you like to have near your sewing machine. There's a zipper over on the side, which is fantastic. And then um, the back area and the side over here, place to put your feet, the mesh, and additional tools back here. So just keep everything near yourself. And it is a cover, it's not a travel bag, it's a cover. So it's a very, very fun project to get yourself started on. 
So that is Undercover. The next little project I want to share with you, we talked about In Control yesterday, which is going to be my, my, my next project to create little kits to have around our sewing stations here in the office and for myself at home. But this is what we call Mad About Mesh. There is no fabric involved in this. <laughs> this is just simply a mesh bag. And again, it comes in three different sizes. And Annie has done a really great thing where you can, she puts a layout on the back of this pattern for using one half yard of her mesh, which is what is in the mesh bags, for more than one bag combination. And again, this is a small. <laughs> it's really amazing. So what I did is I took one of our color families, which is, um, this is, I think, the turquoise, and selected a zipper and one package of the fold-over elastic and taught myself how to use fold-over elastic with mesh. And this, all, you know, you can put projects in here at home. You can put your tennis shoes in here for traveling, whatever you want to use this for. But again, this is the small. <laughs> so... I think I could put a half a yard of mesh in one of those mesh bags to very, very good use for a lot of small travel bags. So these can be a great gift for somebody and also um, use that stiletto on this to go around each one of the corners. But it's a great way to learn how to work with mesh and the fold over elastic. The next little project I want to share with you is also another starter, too, is the Petite Four Baskets. These are a simple kit. Um, we pick out, or you pick out, two fabrics. And it becomes the, the lining and the outside. And it teaches you how to really stitch with the soft and stable. You can make a ton of these in no time. And it takes two 10-inch squares. 11 inch cut of the soft and stable and you got yourself a basket. So we just put some of our fat eighths in here and um, to show the size of these baskets. But they basically measure two and a half inches high, five inches wide and four inches deep. So they're really cute little projects to put anything in in your house. Now, these three are so fun, and I think this is probably the most popular little pattern and gift item that I have seen in a while. It is called Clam Up. These are three zipper pouches that I made, but the pattern um, describes five different size bags, okay? And all of the supplies, and you probably can't see this because of the glare of the plastic on here, but... All of the different sizes that you can make, and I'll share with you from extra small to extra large, okay? This little precious piece of art <laughs> is an extra small, and so each one has two zipper pulls, so we put together kits of this using our by-the-yard zippers, and little holding handles, and then your tabs. These are just so cute. And I quilted this up with our bright fabric, the Medora Flora and all these really, really fun bright fabrics. And this is the Phoenix Rainbow. And made just a little set of these. But this is extra small. This is the medium. So there's a size in between these two. The medium I did not quilt. I just decided to use the simple soft and stable. Inside I put vinyl. The vinyl we also offer by the yard. So if you want the vinyl, that's an optional add-on to this project. But then everything stays clean. You can just wipe this out or wash it, whatever. To If you use this for cosmetics or any of your um, cream. <laughs> this is the extra large. So now there's one size in between the medium and the extra large. I quilted this one up and I didn't use the uh, vinyl inside on this particular one. So it's much bigger, has a lot of space in it. So I think this is probably the size that most people would use when they uh, travel and get yourself organized for a trip. That's a great, nice size. 
Um, I would strongly recommend when you make these, not to start with the tiny one like I did. <laughs> I started with the smallest project imaginable. Um, so make a bigger one and then you'll get all the techniques in place for the rest of them. But it's really a great project. And this is the clam up um, pattern as well. You know, the one thing I am going to mention too is on the By Annie Patterns website, she offers these add-on video tutorials, which are so worth every minute and teaches you the little nuances of every single one of her projects. There's a plug for By Annie. She's, <laughs> it's great. Um, up here is the Get Out of Town Duffel 2. And this, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to grab the size. It's 10 inches high and it's 16 inches wide. So just a bit narrower than a half yard. And it's seven inches deep. So it's a pretty deep bag. And again, another fantastic duffel. This project gives you um, places to put whatever you need quick access to on the side with some pockets, pockets on both sides. And again, this uses the one inch strapping and each one of the accessories for that, which is the triangle hook, the swivels, and your sliders as well. And this side has a zipper opening as well as a pocket. And inside i gotta show you the inside of this bag it is magnificent but we have a stabilizer on the bottom plus pockets everywhere now you can customize your pockets if you don't like the dimensions of each one i'm going to take this down a little bit of where she has positioned or recommended in the pattern this has mesh with fold over elastic on the edge of it so very functional and each edge inside the bag has binding so they're all finished this will last forever and then there's your zipper okay and that is the get out of town duffel this probably takes this project here the get out of town and the ultimate travel bag both take about a yard and a half of three different fabrics each. So those are pretty fabric intensive, but the size is, is perfect. These two projects um, I sewed up and was also very educational for me to figure out how to sew with some of the, the Biani patterns. This is Take a Stand. And I made the small there's a small and a large, and the small one here is more for your accessories or your projects. Um, inside here is a very open bag with mesh, so I taught myself how to use the mesh. And so with that, and the zipper, and it's partner in crime here. <laughs> these were designed to go together, is running with scissors. The running with scissors is where you are storing all of your tools. And it is a great bag, let me tell you. So I made the same um, like coordinating fabric, I should say. And it has a zipper on the outside for your projects here or tools or any of your larger rulers. Same with this side here. So that's pretty standard on a lot of Annie bags with the handle. Again, this is one inch strapping. And then on the inside are so many compartments. And again, these can all be customized to your size tools, but any of your rotary cutters, your scissors, your um, needles, your pins, Everything goes in here. These are for spools of thread. So we've, we've used our elastic here. And same with the other side. 
zipper closures. There's your vinyl. So you can put uh, bobbins, things that you need to see really and get at really quickly. So many different layers. Every time you see a binding, you're seeing an opening for another tool. And this was intended to stand on top of this, take a stand. That's why it's named take a stand. And so you have two different yet matching functional project bags. I have to say, I'm kind of proud of these. These are, <laughs> I'm like so excited that I was able to do that um, and make all these zippers work all the way around a bag. That was beyond my comprehension of doing. And the last bag I want to share with you is the Bowl Me Over, which is a great name for a bag. Bowl Me Over, and it is a handbag. It has kind of that bowling bag size and style, and it is about 10 and a half inches tall, 13 inches wide, and I'm going to pick it up here so that you can see it, 13 inches wide at the bottom. And then the depth of this is about, I think it's five inches or so. This will teach you how to work with flaps. And there's a snap in here, um, which we also have our Annie snaps. And then an opening here. You can hear that snap. Inside is mesh. So you can store all of your precious things on the sides. And then this side has, oh, and this opens up really wide, has a zipper with mesh as well. And a very ni nice note from Annie on how to put the stabilizer in the bottom. <laughs> so I have to I have so much fun with her. So these are Annie's samples and we provided her with fabric to to make these. And um, so eventually these will have to go back to her. But by the time that happens, we are going to have our own sets of them here. So that is just too much fun. So that's a little tour with all of our Biani projects. And we'll move on to the next topic, which is double borders. We're back. Yes. So we have this wide fabric really wide fabric and we were thinking about other applications what can we do with this so we created double border extra wide fabric 205 thread count cotton to solve another one of life's puzzles <laughs> what to do with the shower curtain <laughs> it's not only for a shower curtain, well, but it to, has a lot of applications, <laughs> but it does help make a very pretty shower curtain. But so, before we get into that, <laughs> let's talk about the fabric itself. The fabric is 115 inches wide. Oh, here. Well, see you. I'm out of the picture. So they say. <laughs> and... <laughs> has a 10 inch yeah. wide border on both, sides. on both sides. Yeah. With our Phoenix motif in the center. And let's show some of the colors. Okay, okay. This one here is Midnight Sandstorm. And um, here is, I love this one. This is Merlot which is just a beautiful kind of eggplanty shade. And we always have to have a brown bark. I love the brown. And all of these different shades, you know, when we're, we're kidding about the shower curtain, which is actually hanging behind us. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. This is Ivy. Um, but all of our colors, we tried to find some really nice home decorating shades. This is dusty denim, and that's the shade that's behind you there. Uh, for one reason is we look at a lot of the double borders and think, what can we do with this? Um, 
it's not just for quilt backings. However, this is twilight blue. However, I don't think there's anything cuter than using a double border on the top back of a quilt and then turning it down when you turn down your bed and seeing something beautiful like the border on the outside looking great. I mean, it would just really be a beautiful accent because we do get a lot of people who ask the question of how can I put that double border on the back of a quilt? How do I situate it? What do I do with it? And um, there's no right or wrong answer. This is Copen Blue, but it does add a lot of a lot of interest. And each one of these shades are just beautiful for home deck. Here is uh, Zalia, and this we featured in our Christmas tree skirt project this year, and that is definitely at our house. <laughs> that was very special. And here is Early Autumn. And this was our tablecloth. We used this for our Thanksgiving tablecloth. And so what I'm going to try to do is show you images of each one of these projects um, on the screen so that you can see them because we can't bring everything here. And so we thought we would just share the different fabrics with you and how we've applied them as well. So should we show them a little bit more about the shower curtain? Let's do it. Okay. So the reason we really wanted to share um, the simplicity of a shower curtain is it really showcases how to use a fabric with a border and in a very simple way. So I'm going to start at the bottom, which is a very strange place to start, but one edge of the fabric, as we displayed when we held out the fabric, is a border. And so the bottom of the, the shower curtain is just a simple hem. So we're using the feature of the fabric to create the bottom border that will run along the bottom of your shower. Then, it, there's, so there's no seaming here at all. And so then it's just simply the center of the backing fabric, which becomes the center of your shower curtain. And then the top of the shower curtain is pieced. So we're adding, I would call it a flounce, to the top of your shower curtain, which is the other border. And simple buttonholes, or you could use grommets. We have both options for our project kits that we have for shower curtains. So you can pick any color that you'd like, and you can pick a non-border as well, and you can have grommets, or the pattern also describes how to use your buttonholer. And it's just a simple overlay from the second border. And it's just a great way to use the fabric in its entirety. You end up with, from this fabric that we include in the kit, which is about, it's a little over two yards to make a shower curtain. And you'll end up with about, I don't know, maybe 18 inches or 20 inches in the middle that's left over for your next project. But this is how simple it is. And the other thing I wanna share with you is, and I'm gonna put it up on the screen, is the duvet cover and pillow shams that we made out of the exact same color fabric because in our home we have a guest room and a shower and a bathroom that's connected and so we really wanted it to be a matching set and so we'll show you what that looks like as well and it's it all of these projects are on our website under the category of so boutique home and they're just various projects that, that um, showcase the double border themselves. And, you know, hold on one second. The one thing that I don't know if you saw um, in the other display is an apron. And this is really cute. So hold on one second. And many of you might be familiar with Mary Malari. Um, she designs patterns and several of them are aprons. And this is the Ivy double border. And it's a reversible apron. It's got a crisscross on the back. And the inside is the early autumn. And so you can make this a reversible apron. And we have these available 
as an apron only or with an oven mitt project as well. So another way to use a double border. So this has been a lot of fun. Uh, we really appreciate you allowing us to be in front of you. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not as good as actually being in front of you. And we miss that very much. But um, we hope the time comes that we can do that again yeah. very soon. Yeah. And um, uh, we enjoyed sharing with you our batik rayons and jersey knits yesterday. And also our uh, cotton, our by Annie bags, and our so batik for the home ideas that we are trying to incorporate into our double border, 115 inch wide fabric. And there's really, it's amazing. There's so much more we could talk about. Um, it's so hard when we're not like walking around and showing you everything that, that is near and dear to us, whether it be fabric or the projects that we like to share. So um, I don't know if we'll have any time to do a Q&A after this, but we just wanna make sure that if you do have any questions, you definitely ask and um, where can they find us? Okay, you can find us at sobatique.com. And that's very simple, sobatique.com, all one word. And um, you'll see our fabrics, our projects, our inspirational blogs, and- um, They can chat at us too. Yes, there is a chat feature down in the lower left-hand corner or right-hand corner that um, we answer very promptly. And if we're not available to answer, leave us your email and we'll get back to you with any questions that you have. Remember that we um, send swatches. So if you ever have a question about a fabric, let us know what swatches you would like in your mailing address. Sign up for, your, for our newsletter and follow us on YouTube. We have a really, really fun educational series on all the various patterns that we've come out with over um, and with our fabrics and how to use our fabrics. That's the fun part for us is the fabric. So thank you so much for staying with us and we'll see you again soon. Yes. Bye now. Bye.